Hey, what's up, guys? It's Aris, one half of the Horror Highway, and welcome to the definitive darkest TikTok iceberg. I'm sure I missed some things, and if I did, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to make another TikTok iceberg video, at least not currently. Maybe in the future, I'll gather the things I missed and make another one, but that'll be far in the future. Right now, what I'm really looking forward to is our new series that should start in two weeks. One week from now, you guys should be getting an intro to that series and explaining what it is, just because we don't want to do that at the beginning of those episodes, just so we could get into it as quickly as possible. Anyways, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it really helps us in the algorithm. Also, check out our horror story channel if you like horror stories or wondered where ours went, horror highway stories, and check out our Discord. Both of those things will be linked in the description. So yeah, check those out. Anyways, on to level one. Negativity slides slash depressed slideshows slash villain arc slash the indifferent cruelty of the universe. So the trend that really made me want to make this video comes after this one, but I have to talk about this one first. So full context of both trends could be reached. So yeah, and, and I mean, this one does technically deserve to be on this iceberg anyways, so. I'm pretty sure this started around May slash June of 2022. I could be wrong. Uh, that's as far as I could trace it back. If anyone knows if it started earlier than that, uh, just leave it in the comments. I'll try to fix it in the description or something. So what this trend basically was, was pictures that made you feel worse about your life and just got you depressed. And although not completely dead it's slowed down heavily even now i just see one or two every two weeks so i guess that could mean people grew out of it or i just got out of that little bubble in tiktok i'm not seeing them so it's helped my mental health a bit positivity slides slash hope posted slash the indomitable human spirit so this TikTok trend is literally derived from the other trend, the negativity slides. So this is the one TikTok trend that made me want to make the TikTok iceberg. It really means a lot to me and it helped me a lot with my mental health. And I'm, I'm definitely happier after seeing all the positivity stuff that comes from TikTok. I'm just saying, I know a lot of people hate on TikTok for rotting our brains and shit. But I, it really helped me. Like, this trend really helped me, so. <laughs> no, I'm not advocating for TikTok, though. I'm just advocating for this trend, you know. I'll just be a better person. I should have said this in the last entry. And I didn't. I'm sorry for that. I'm saying it now, though. But if you're depressed or feeling any negative thoughts, make sure to talk to someone. Someone that cares. Uh, I'm sure people care. We care. Uh, I hope you end up being okay. Just talk to someone. It really does help. Okay, I know this is the, technically the darkest TikTok iceberg, but this is the first layer, so I feel like I could get away with this. So yeah, just don't chill me out for it, please. <laughs> so yeah, like I said earlier, this trend literally derived from the previous one, the negativity slides, and it started around September slash October of 2022. And it was mainly to combat the negativity slides with positivity slides and like the hope posted slash indomitable human spirit and right now it has its own derivative known as the I have no enemies which is basically the same just more manga and anime inspired because the, the I have no enemies comes from villain saga uh, goaded series uh, check it out <laughs> if you guys had the time for it villain saga also helped me I'm just trying to spread positivity with this one. And that one is a lot more stoicism centric as well, which I'm not a stoic, but I do like some parts of stoicism. I see a lot more positivity slideshows and positivity videos on TikTok than I do negativity ones. And that's probably because I like every single one that I see. <laughs> so that's probably why, because you know how the algorithm works. Whatever you like, it, it sends you more. So. It's either that or the negativity slides slowed down so much that the positivity slides overtook it over time and stuff. So yeah, I guess I'll, I didn't want to show this at the negativity slides because I didn't want to make people depressed. But I will show positivity slides that I personally like 
So here's some. I have no regrets in meeting you, friend. Should the day ever come that we are not together, you will continue to shine like gold in my memories. I have no regrets. Fuzz 99. Shout out to The Flying Oreo. Uh, they made a great video on the person slash topic. Uh, I'll link them in the description. Anyways. He was a TikTok creator who did LGBT plus Q content and was cyberbullied so much that the police came to his house and asked him to stop because they thought he might start harming himself. People started spreading allegations saying that he was a groomer and a PDF file, etc. Because he was a substitute teacher, a camp counselor, and had a high school friend. Yeah, that high school friend one is kind of weird. He was 26, and I mean, I get it if like you're 18, 19, and like the friend is 17, like you're in your 20s, I, I think you shouldn't have any friends in high school at that point. But for the most part, he never really did slash said anything that would make anyone really think that he was a groomer slash pediophile. What I think is that it was just an excuse to hate on him and bully him. Eventually, it was revealed that the high school friend was actually his cousin. I guess that makes it slightly better than just having a random high school friend when you're 26. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and there was no evidence of him actually grooming his cousin. So, I'm pretty sure people only really bullied him and spread allegations about him was because he was annoying and I also find his content annoying. But I just chose to ignore it and just, no, swiped it if anything ever came across my For You page. It's fine to find stuff annoying. Usually I just ignore it. But these people spread allegations that he was a groomer. Which could cause more harm than good if they weren't actually groomers. But yeah, just try not to be an asshole. Cartnark. So, I'm recording this before The Darkest Fortune Iceberg Volume 2 is uploaded, and if all goes to plan, this should be uploaded after. So if you did see our Volume 2 of The Fortune Iceberg, then you would know of the shopping cart green text. Here it is on screen if you'd like to read it. I did read it on that other video if you want to check it out. Anyways, uh, Cartnark is a necessary evil in our world. The guy himself is really annoying, and I even consider him a male Karen. But the DD does is great. Basically, Cartnark took that whole green text to heart and confronts people who don't put their carts in the designated areas. And I love it. As someone who's worked a job that requires me to push the carts, I completely support this guy. And I would also like to spread awareness of always putting your carts back in the designated area. It's not that hard, and and it's usually teenagers that do the cart pushing jobs. And I mean, yeah, it's literally not hard. I just hope our subscribers, and I mean, whoever else is listening to this video, puts the carts back in the little, like, corral areas. I mean, if you don't, uh, you never know, Cartnark might, like, spawn in and be waiting for you. Hamster cult. It's not a cult as the name suggests. It's more like a meme. It's not even scary at that, so. It all started on January of 2021. The video was uploaded by a user that went as Beanboy22. And it quickly spread and became a meme. Here's the video right now.
basically what the whole cult aspect means is that a bunch of people grabbed the picture of the hamster and made it their profile pictures. There's a lot of quote-unquote cults on TikTok, but this is just the most prolific one. It's not scary, but I mean, yeah. It's the most popular, so I think I have to talk about it. Vegan teacher. Uh, I really don't want to talk about this one. A former TikToker who was known for her controversial videos in which she promotes veganism. Uh, look, I don't have an issue with veganism. Just don't be a Karen about it. She would get mad at people for not being vegan or not agreeing with her beliefs. She eventually got accused of racism and homophobia. On March 2nd, 2021, she made a video saying that she should be allowed to say the N-word. She later made a different video where she shows a Miss Elena doll and a piece of paper with compliments directed to the doll, all arranged in an acronym that spell out the N-word. Yeah, she's definitely a racist. NyQuil chicken. So people started cooking chicken in NyQuil. Yeah, that sounds pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? The original video is now deleted, but the user who posted it goes as at IG Rob Flow. He said in the video that his wife got sick, so he decided to cook her some NyQuil chicken. And of course, after that video, more people decided to cook NyQuil chicken. So the original video was posted on September 4th, 2020, but it didn't go viral till January 2022 due to another user who reacted to the video. He's known as Action Jackson. So to my understanding, the trend wasn't actually cooking the NyQuil chicken and eating it. It was cooking it and making fun of it because it was just stupid. Now, I know this is the TikTok iceberg. And while this does have to do with TikTok, it actually has its origins rooted to 4chan. Yeah, Horror Highway's bread and butter. And ever since I found out about that, since researching for the TikTok iceberg, I, I will add this to our part three of 4chan iceberg. Stay tuned for both, <laughs> for everything coming up. So on April 1st, 2017, April Fools, a 4chan user would post a picture saying how he cooked NyQuil chicken. I think he called it Sleepy Time Chicken or Sleepy Chicken, something like that. Here's the post on screen if you want to see it. Then on April 20th, 2017, a Twitter user would post an image of NyQuil chicken saying how he cooked it, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm 99.99% sure that everyone knows not to eat NyQuil chicken. That is just dumb. There might be like that one zero, that 0.01% that actually ate the chicken. But the whole trend, quote unquote, wasn't eating the chicken, it was making fun of the chicken and also cooking it because it was just dumb. At least to my knowledge. Gorilla Glue Girl. Her real name is Tessica Brown. She ran out of her usual got to be glue spray and used industrial strength Gorilla Glue as a replacement. She went viral on February 2021. She said her hair had been stuck in the same style for about a month. She went to the emergency room at St. Bernard's Parish Hospital in Shamlet, Louisiana, hoping to fix her situation. But all the staff could offer was acetone to remove the glue, which would have taken hours to apply. Days later, Brown cut off her ponytail in hopes to help her hack away at the glue, but it was still no use. She was running out of ideas. Then she got a call from a stranger who connected her with Dr. Michael Obang. He's a plastic surgeon based in Beverly Hills. And on February 10th, Obang performed surgery on Tessica for free. And it was successful. She was freed. Now, I remember this a couple of years ago people were making fun of her for doing that. 
I thought it was pretty funny. I mean, industrial strength glue on your head just sounds like a bad idea. I really couldn't tell you what was going on in her head at the time. Well, besides the Gorilla Glue. Don Foyo. So, the king of... The camera position properly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don Foyo. The king of Ohio himself. Uh, his real name is Agustin. I'll be honest here, I only have him on the iceberg because a lot of my IRL friends do like the meme. Personally, it's an okay meme, but yeah, I only have it on there for that. <laughs> so this meme rose popularity slightly after the Ohio memes did. It was during, like both of them were rising, like Ohio and then Don Pollo right here. And then while Don Pollo was like doing his content and being dumb like they kind of evened out and then he became quote unquote the king of ohio and then there was another user known as the final boss of ohio so yeah it, it's also i mean it's not as prominent anymore but it was pretty prominent throughout 2022 he was basically making a, a food review video mukbang i, I don't know what you would call it but he was eating a rotisserie chicken in his car. And then in the middle of the video, his phone rang and he stopped it. And that's exactly why it got popular. The Just the phone ringing, it was like the standard Android sound, which my friends also find funny. I, I find it funny too, because it is funny. But yeah, he's also known for the El Que Quiere Pero Su Tiempo sound. Honestly, most of his content is him in his car or like sitting down eating food and then his phone interrupting him and so people edit his videos and the sounds to make the phone notifications loud and just spread out throughout the whole video that way it's not just towards where it does interrupt it Lalo, Lalo, aka Lalo Gambrazi, is a TikTok user who is a lolcow. A lolcow is a person or a group of people who are laughed at for actions that they take and do, despite not trying to be funny and taking themselves so seriously. But they are also often milked for laughs. And Lalo is one of these locales so i'm not entirely sure when lalo posted his first ever video or did his first ever live stream dextero says 2022 i'm pretty sure i've seen his content around uh, at least till 2021 and one of his accounts his earliest video is 2021 but he's also had a lot of accounts banned so i'm not too sure I can't really trace when his earliest video was. I gotta use my glasses, hold on. So Dextero also gets his name and his birthplace wrong. As his name, they think it's Nalgon, which translates to fat ass. Yeah. So Nalgon is one of the first, I guess, waves of people making fun of him for. It was either, hey Nalgon, what's up my little gummy bear, or hey papi, hey daddy, stuff like that, either on his live streams or on his videos, and he would commonly respond to these comments and then on live stream, yelling at the camera saying, I'm not your fucking gummy bear, or don't call me Nalgon, here's an example. Look, this thing up here says, sorry daddy, but no charm. First of all, bro, I'm not your daddy. Stop calling me daddy already. And you're calling me Panochon. Do I look like a Panochon to you? I'm a straight man. I'm not a Panochon. 
Stop. Also with Dick Stero, making his name Nalgon, quote unquote, is technically also joining in on making fun of him. Kinda bad look for you, Dextero. So, from my understanding, Lalo was homeless when he started doing TikTok. And like I said, he would stream and post videos with, you know, the earlier comments I made with people calling him Nalgon and Gummy Bear, etc. And around that time when he was homeless, that's that's when the low cow, I guess, effect started. He eventually got off the streets. Good for him. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was because of him being a local that he managed to get off of the streets. So that's like one good thing that happened for him becoming a local. So there was a death hoax for Lalo talking about a shooting that happened in the area where he was around at. He didn't actually get shot, but the death hoax saying that he got sent to the hospital because he got shot twice in the chest. And that was posted by official and unofficial media. So it was kind of hard to validate until he like came back and cleared it up. He then shifted to rapping slash singing Sleazy Flow by Sleazy World in both English and Spanish. And while he was doing that, I guess, era of Lalo, people were making fun of him saying that he's only making this type of video and it's basically his song. And then eventually he went on stage with a Hispanic band called Fuerza Regida and singing it on stage. I don't know how he got away with that, but he ended up singing a song that he never made by a completely different artist on stage in a concert, so beats me. And as of late, he just makes videos of himself eating with the audio. If he can't break bread, he's fake. I got one more buck on my plate. It was me and bro, he was in the store and both of us got 50 cent cake. Here's one of the videos, if you guys wanna see it. Hey, you heard I said that new shit, I say, if he can't break bread, he fake. I had one more buck on my plate. It was me and bro, we was in the store, and both of us got 50 cent cake. So this is, I guess, the current era of Lalo. He's gained a lot of weight, and that is what I still think he's considered a low cow. People are making fun of him because he's fat now. And I mean, half of the people are trying to tell him to lose weight. Half of the other people are just making fun of him for being fat. There's a lot more to Lalo lore, but this is not that type of video and we're Horror Highway and we don't do that type of content either. So I would like to see a video on Lalo, but I don't think Horror Highway will make it due to it not being horror related. Anyways, I'm happy he isn't homeless anymore, even if that did come from him being a locale. I'm still happy he isn't homeless, so good luck to him. Uh, hopefully he does lose weight. Uh, I need more bullets. A funny meme that came out of the AI live streams, and it's only really on here because I think it's funny. Here's a video. Toxic Red. He's also a TikTok locale. He makes a lot of cringy videos, causing people to make fun of him. There's also a running joke in the Toxic Red community, I don't know what you would call it, about him grounding us because he would turn off the comments. The reason why is because TikTok users would make fun of people who Toxic Red duetted. He doesn't mind if the comments are about him, but he does get upset if it's about the other people. I'll be honest, I also found the videos cringy and we're only really there for the comments people made. But as of late, I kind of do find him a tad bit inspirational. He said his dream is to be a professional wrestler and a sumo wrestler, and had a small arc where he had to choose one. While he did end up choosing sumo, and has now been accepted to a sumo school, I am happy for him because he's following his dream. I'm not sure if he gave up on professional wrestling, I hope not. And I also hope that he can find a way of making a living because from what I know about sumo is that only the top two ranks get salary pay while the others have to rely on their sumo tournament winnings. There's also another account called Toxic Red Lover 54 I don't know if he's making fun of him, but his videos are positive things about Toxic Red. And his bio does say, Toxic Red is my hero. 
there's a decent amount of lore to Toxic Red, but like the Lalo entry, we won't be making a video on him because our channel doesn't do that type of content, I guess, right? We're horror based and this isn't really horror, so yeah. Level two. So let's start this video with something really recent. If you guys remember, I think late June, earlier July, there was a, the Grimace Shake trend and I found these absolutely hilarious. And I do think they fit into the quote unquote darkest TikTok iceberg just because it is somewhat horror related. Anyways, let me just explain what it is. So for Grimace's birthday this year, McDonald's released the Grimace Shake, which is just a milkshake and it's purple. Uh, I don't think they told the ingredients, so I think that is what kind of inspired the joke. And basically, TikTokers would go buy the Grimace Shake. They Obviously, they'd be recording, right? They'd buy it, they drink it, or they take a little sip, and then it cuts to a horrifying scene. Either them dying or, or them dead or just really obscure places hurt and it was always implied that grimace did it here's a couple of my favorites what's up guys we're here to celebrate grimace's birthday we got some shakes this one's for you grimace happy, happy birthday, birthday grimace, grimace. What's up guys? We got ourselves a Grimace shake. We're gonna give this a try. Happy birthday, Grimace. <laughs> yeah, it's not that Yo, Timmy, what are you drinking? I got the Grimace birthday shake. Happy birthday, Grimace. So one of the main reasons I decided to put this on the iceberg was to show how good Gen Z is at making absurdist horror. And obviously no one would have thought that this Grimace shake would evolve into a horror-based trend. And I and I love it. It's it's just to me it's hilarious. Jail talk. Jail talk is basically a subcategory of TikTok where people who are in jail make TikToks. And that's pretty much the entry. Some of these get a lot of views because it's people being like, what the hell? How do you have a phone in jail? And I mean, we all know how they got phones in jail. But yeah, it's not that hard of an explanation. Uh, I'm not sure if I could put any videos of this on here, so I won't. But they're not hard to find either. Cartel talk. It's similar to the jail talk entry, but rather than people being in jail, they're in the cartel. And they post themselves doing cartel things. And yeah, that's, I'm sure you guys can picture what that is. And similar to the other ones, these get a lot of views, and it's not hard to see why. Uh, these are slightly harder to find than the gel talk ones. Due to it being cartel talk, they usually get deleted after a certain amount of time. So if you find one, then uh, I guess you're kind of lucky. December 22nd, 2022. So this is a quick one. There's not a lot to it. But basically on December 22nd, 2022... The TikTok moderators or whoever accepts videos or bans videos or deletes them were just off and didn't work that day or something. Because this is the day when TikTok got flooded with corn. And that's pretty much the entry. After that, everything got deleted. I'm sure there's maybe like one or two out there, but they're pretty much deleted once they're uploaded. And yeah, 
it was flooded with corn and that's it. Hopefully no kids like actually saw anything bad. Anthony Gange, aka Gange Power. I hope I said his last name right. I'm not sure if I did. So he's mostly on this iceberg because of a TikTok of himself driving a white van with the words free candy written on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I need to go into more detail than that. That's already pretty weird. Now, I'm pretty sure he never did anything to kids. He just did the white van with free candies written on it because he wanted attention on social media, views, follows, money. I, I don't know. He's just it's just really weird. He did get charged for a crime on July 5th of 2023. So like earlier this month for attempted public mischief. I'm pretty sure it was for the white van. I could be wrong about that. It could be for some other stuff. He also posts other videos simulating crimes to try and get the attention of other police services slash government agencies such as the FBI. So I sure hope he didn't actually do anything to anyone. Foul mittens outdoors. So I think this isn't really known outside of the TikTok. I'm sure, like, Mook's Top 5 has covered, like, a video or two of his. And I'm not sure if it's a... What are those called? ARGs? <laughs> I don't... I, it kind of feels like an ARG. Or just, like, a story playing out. But the account itself also has things that don't have to do with the topic of it. Because if you scroll down enough, you see things like the owner of the account playing with their kids, etc. Ice fishing, stuff like that. And then... The main thing that made me want to add this onto the iceberg is apparently there's a creature stalking his family and his house. And on the video that I first saw of it, which was technically the second video, he said that it was on his roof. And for some reason, the dude goes outside and tries to look for it on his roof. And then you could see eyes on the roof. And I mean, here's the video. Well, she just woke me up again and uh, said she heard it on the roof. And this time, so did I, so you can get out there and have a look. Okay. Get the other side. Oh my God. A lot of people say the creature is Bigfoot, others say alien, some others say skinwalkers, wendigos, etc. Plenty of theories out there. Like I said, it kind of feels like a story playing out. Because nowadays, I think he calls it the wishing rock. And it just feels like a continuous story. I don't know if that could be considered an ARG. I think that's like a different term. But yeah, it's it's certainly weird. And what do you guys think? Faking Disabilities so some people go on TikTok and make accounts to post videos or do live streams of themselves having fake disabilities. And they do this for views, money, followers, etc. And yeah, that's pretty much what the entry consists of. Tizzy, ENT. So I'll be completely honest. This is only here because of this TikTok. There's this creator with 5.7 million followers named Tizzy Ant. And after I saw this video of them, I honestly think that they're unhinged. Now, the weirdest thing is that after seeing this video, I try to look up like context about the situation and there's nothing. There's nothing out there. This video doesn't exist anywhere else except this one video where I found it from. Basically, what Tizzy Ant's doing in this video is trying to get his 12 year old followers to home wreck two 12 year olds relationships. And he is advertising this 12 year old to get people to date him because he doesn't like this guy's girlfriend or something and he thinks he could do better. So I'm just gonna play this video for you and I want you to let me know what you think about this. Hi everybody. So the other day I posted a video about a young girl who decided to jump on my videos and leave comments about how I'm a pedophile. And when I approached her about it, she was like, I don't give a fuck, I can do what I want, I can say what I want. And I was like, cool. And I sent you all to pay her a visit and many of you did and thank you for that. Well, her account was called Iona Loves Sean and it's all about how she's obsessed with her boyfriend, Sean, even okay. though they're 12 years old. Well, today, I found Sean. Now, here's the thing. I don't want anyone to go give Sean hate. Actually, Sean seems like a really sweet guy. Um, 
If anything, I think Sean deserves better. So I figure there's got to be some followers here that are around the age of 12. Uh, lovely young ladies who are also nice. So why don't you hop over and pay Sean a visit? That is, if you like uh, good-looking young men with chestnut brown hair who also have Australian accents. So there he is, trying to get his followers to home wreck a 12-year-old's relationship. As, like, a general rule, once you're, like... 13 maybe 14 you should never care about a 12 year old relationship ever again so what do you guys think about this let me know in the comments thanks for watching and follow for more i don't know much about the guy but it seems just really weird that you as a grown adult would be in a kid's business i don't know i don't know what age they are i really don't care it's just really weird for a grown-ass man being in a kid's business uh, I mean, the only way I would find that acceptable is if it's your kid, but it's not his kids, and it's just really weird. AI live streams. I think it also goes by NPC live streams. There are a somewhat new trend where TikTok creators go live and pretend to be an AI slash NPC and react with whatever someone donates to them. It's not really scary, but it is kind of unsettling that, I mean, that we have come to this. I saw that I show speed, did it for an hour, and got around 30k for it. I'm pretty sure that everyone that's doing this trend is only getting a lot of money for it right now because it's red hot. And I mean, it is insane that they're getting that much money. And you know, I, don't get me wrong, I kind of felt like doing it. You know, need, need a quick bag. But yeah, here's an example of one. People who do this are making two to four k a month, two thousand to four thousand dollars a month or more. So if y'all see me out here like. Hello, Ashley. Chick-fil-A. Is it raining? It is indeed raining, and it is making me sh sh short circuit. I love this. Thank you. The silhouette challenge. So the challenge itself wasn't the bad thing. It was more like the aftermath. Basically, what the challenge was, was you just chilling, doing something. Uh, I can't remember what exactly, but then the video cuts to a red filter where everything is red but you and you're you're like outlined in black you're just a silhouette right and the implied thing of the trend is that when it comes to the silhouette you're either naked or you're you're doing risky things you know and yeah that, that was the trend right and like i said that wasn't the bad part obviously normal people didn't really do anything outside of that but then the weirdos came in so apparently the filter itself could be edited through video editing softwares to be reversed and there was a lot of tutorials on both TikTok and YouTube teaching people how to reverse it. And I don't know if they're real or not. I don't know if they worked. I never did it myself. I'm not going to. So, yeah. Obviously, then people tried doing it. And a lot of people were saying, hey, don't do this trend. Uh, delete all the videos you have of yourself doing it, etc. I'm not sure if this is true or not. But the only other thing I could think of that has to do with this trend is that TikTok probably saves every video that was ever posted. And there's probably a hard drive out there with all the videos ever posted with this trend going on. There might be one out there. So I'm just saying. The Milk Crate Challenge. So I'm going to be honest, and I actually found this challenge pretty funny when it was popular. I even wanted to try it. And the place I work at sold milk crates. And me and my coworkers were joking around like we should just set it up here and, and try it. We never did, luckily, especially because the floor was concrete. Anyways, the challenge became popular around August 2021, and TikTok helped popularize the challenge. It's basically people build a pyramid slash triangle of milk crates from one milk crate up to, I think it was five, and then tried to climb it up and back down without getting hurt. And as the structure gets higher, the less stable it is, and it's insanely easy to fall off. Obviously, this trend is very dangerous, and it has caused injuries from dislocated shoulders to spinal cord injuries. So please don't try it. I'm not really going to show any videos here. Maybe a picture here too, but yeah, don't try it. Where is everyone? So where is everyone is a TikTok ARG. And okay, so a little backstory for this, for the channel itself. I've been wanting to do a video on an ARG. And when I noticed that a lot of TikTok ARGs weren't covered, this was on the list of doing it. And when I looked into it, it was interesting at first. So it's an ARG that started on October 22nd, 2019. And like I said, it started off really good. I enjoyed the beginning of it. And basically the OP wakes up and his mom is missing. He goes outside and he notices that his town, 
his cul-de-sac street is missing. And eventually, as the series continues, he notices that his city is missing. And he eventually visits other places around the United States. And it's implied that the whole world is missing too. So one of the things that isn't explored throughout the ARG slash story slash whatever is that each time he goes to stores, he stocks up on supplies in order to survive. And then when he comes back to the stores in order to get more supplies, everything is restocked. Everything is not expired. It's new, but it's just him. And obviously, I'm pretty sure the creator of the ARG just waits till there's no one either in the store or in the aisle or whatever. But another weird thing is, well, it's not really weird. It's more like a coincidence or something. Each time he would do a video driving through streets, through cities and stuff, there's no people, there's no other cars parked. Or there's cars parked, but there's no people driving the cars. And when it's like highways, it's just him on the highway. And it's just really, I guess, coincidental. I'm not sure if that's the right word. But yeah, th he never records anyone else or any other cars driving, which is really interesting on how he managed to do that. Well, here's the first video. So obviously the ARG itself is very liminal space inspired and it did have an interesting beginning, but towards the end, it just fell off. There was no real story progression. In my opinion, it's just the creator visiting places and is like, what the fuck? Where is everyone? <laughs> right? As the name suggests. And his last video is him at a beach at nighttime looking around and just saying, fuck. And it just ends there. Nothing else is posted after that. It was posted on August 17th, 2021. Obviously, I feel like the COVID pandemic helped this ARG finding places that aren't populated with people. And I feel like he could have expanded more then, but he didn't. I feel like this ARG had a lot of potential and just didn't live up to it. But what do you guys think? The Devious Lick Challenge. The Devious Lick Challenge is a trend on TikTok where users would film themselves stealing school supplies and putting them in their backpack with different variations such as the first day of school copped a devious lick or the word devious is often replaced with diabolical or godforsaken etc so it's basically just stealing stuff from school the trend began september 2021 it started when one tiktok user would just steal a box of disposable masks calling it a devious lick and it just kept escalating from there the original video is deleted but if i could find it it should be on screen right now the Devious Lake Challenge obviously got controversial after schools began reporting stolen items. It was reported on by multiple news outlets. And on September 16th, the trend was banned from TikTok. And for the most part, I did find the trend funny. I think my favorite one was when a guy stole a toilet. I have no idea how he did that, but yeah. The Angelic Yields Challenge it's basically just the opposite of the Devious Lake Challenge, where people would give back things or things they have stolen back to the school. There's not much on this one besides it being the opposite as the Devious Lake one, but it's still kind of funny. Here's a video on it. Just hit the most angelic yield. Ethan Kaiser versus Witch Talk. Okay, so I'm not sure if I missaid his last name. I'm sorry if I did. Anyways, just as the name suggests, this TikToker, Ethan Kaiser, decided to challenge Witch Talk to see if magic and curses were real. And on July 20th, 2022, Kaiser uploaded a video replying to a comment asking him why he stopped his possession series, which is another series like this Witch Talk saga, but with possessions and haunted places, I'm pretty sure. And he replied that throughout the various rituals and haunted locations he visited, nothing really happened. He also mentioned issuing a challenge to Witch Talk on his TikTok live, where he offered to send his shirt, nails, blood, and whatever they might need to curse slash hex him. But no one really took up that challenge till he made this video. He would send multiple items to many witches and it seems like nothing really happened, making it seem like magic isn't real, but that really isn't the case. Because there's people like me who use protection magic on Kaiser in order for him not to get cursed. So uh, I think it would be really appreciated by Kaiser if he does end up seeing this video. I sold my soul to the devil. I played with Ouija boards. I did everything I could 
possibly do to get myself haunted or possessed by a demon. I did this to find out whether or not demons and spirits actually exist. I would live stream myself going to abandoned hospitals with Ouija boards and you, everyone who was on my live stream could see me do all the rituals and nothing happened. Then like witches on witch talk would call me out saying that they could have me cursed or whatever and I invited them to do so. I'd say, let's do it live. I'll send you whatever materials you need from me. If you need my shirt, some of my sweat, blood, whatever you want, I'll send it and put a curse on me and let's see if this stuff is true. And every single one of them backed out when they realized that I wasn't afraid, I wasn't intimidated by them, their little spells, and I was going to expose them for being frauds, which they are. Level three, the dancing lady, AKA the Serbian dancing lady. The Serbian dancing lady is an internet urban legend about a woman who dances at night. She chases anyone who sees or hears her. This woman has been seen dancing at a hospital in Sezdara. The police made several searches for the woman, but she just disappeared. The mystery is supposed to have started in 1998, and since then, people have claimed to have spotted the mysterious lady numerous times. She's believed to be carrying a knife with her and jump in front of people in cars, threatening them. According to some unverified blog posts by people who claim to have encountered the lady, the lady claims herself to be the ambassador of death, and she needs lives for an ancient ritual to resurrect the king of Serbia. But the reason it's on the iceberg is because earlier this year, 2023, this entry went viral on TikTok. A user posted a video of what is supposed to be her, and apparently it was a mentally ill elderly lady, but I'm not sure. Many other videos went viral of people recreating the dance or quote unquote seeing the lady, although they didn't see her in Serbia. So I guess they just took that part out of the legend. And yeah, it just went viral. Here's the original video. This is the original video of the Serbian dancing lady. According to news articles, this woman was spotted dancing by a hospital. When police showed up, she was nowhere to be found. Another witness said that she was roaming the streets and chasing after cars with a knife. She was also threatening people with a knife. The second half of the video shows her chasing, stalking the cameraman. She's also seen threatening him with a knife. This video was filmed back in 2019, and people said that she had mental health issues. No, she was never caught. Zombie lady. In May of 2021, a woman was filled outside of a Seattle apartment building. From the looks of it, she appeared to be injured and seemed to be in mental pain. She was eventually confronted by the police, but only replied by screaming, and she was also holding something by her chest. The police subdued her and took her to a hospital. Also, this has apparently been solved by someone who goes by Rebecca MS, and she found a social media page for a woman named Kimberly Kasai. Kimberly posted a photo of herself before the event with the same makeup on and the caption, I am not your lab rat. And it turns out she is an anti-vaxxer and did the whole thing as some sort of protest of the COVID vaccine. I thought it was kind of spooky at first, but now that I know what it is and what it was about, I think it's pretty dumb. And Nick Crowley actually made a pretty good video of this entry. If you want to check that video out, it'll be linked in the description. Gnome hunting. So this trend started getting popular on TikTok in early 2023. And I'll be completely honest, before I knew exactly what it even meant, I thought it was just schizo posting about cryptid hunting with you and your friends. And I also really like scene core slash hard style slash pretty rave girl music. So I enjoyed it till I knew its true meaning. So gnome hunting is an alt-right slash neo-Nazi dog whistle for hunting Jewish people. 
And throughout the whole trend, the phrase was coined, millions wear the hats, which is a way to say billions must die. Gnomes are in place for Jewish people, and the hats that the gnomes wear represents the kippah. Hopefully I said that right. Sorry if I mispronounce it. A lot of TikToks went viral because the people who were unaware just thought it was schizo posting and even made their own gnome hunting videos to spread it as well. Some other TikTokers went and exposed the trend and spread the truth behind it, like Too Rude slash Chase, who also took responsibility for also posting a gnome hunting video and apologized. Also, just to clarify, the gnome hunting trend was always anti-Semitic, but as it got popular, people just thought it was schizo posting and not bad, and they thought it was made anti-Semitic later on, but it wasn't. Johnny Elbows So if you don't know who this is, he went viral for this video in 2022. Hey! <laughs> you gotta be quicker than that, buddy. So after that, he made his own TikTok account and gained a following, but he isn't on the iceberg for that. Rather, he's on it for this. They're leaving y'all. Sorry, I apologize about this, everybody. Leave him alone, John. Don't pay them no attention, man. If you don't give them any attention, they won't bother you. You know what I mean? No, John. What? What? Uh, no, dude. No, dude. No, not for, not for butt, for shorts. No, dude. No, man. No, dude. And no, bro, that's not, no, bro. I, I found a basketball on that court and got- So yeah, this happened on May 18th, 2023, on a TikTok live by a user that goes by, at Big Boy of Omaha. And then the user, at Brian Salazar, 8480, posted the screen recording later that day. I don't really know how to end this entry, so on to the next one. Randonautica. So our whole podcast slash channel originated kind of with the app, or at least we could trace back the roots to the app. It's an app that launched on February 22nd, 2020. It randomly generated coordinates that enable the user to explore the local area and report on their findings. According to its creators, the app is an attractor of strange things, letting one choose specific coordinates based on a certain theme. With the app's popularity growing, people who use the app started reporting coincidences which many find unsettling. Like there was a video of a user that said that their, I guess, theme was the color red. And when they got to the coordinates, all they saw was a bunch of red cars and random red things around the whole place. But the biggest report that came from this app is a group of people heading towards a beach in West Seattle by the app's instruction or the coordinates the app gives you. And they found this bag slash suitcase, which ended up having two bodies of people in it. I'm not sure if I could play the video, but the video doesn't really show the bodies, so I'm gonna play it anyways. Here it is. There was another one that wasn't as creepy, but it was like a giant nest type thing. If I find the video, I'll, I'll play it. So, yeah. My boyfriend and I decided to go on a Green or Not adventure, and you guys, it gets so creepy. Do not do this alone. We ended up driving through this really weird street. There was no one there. And we also ended up walking a little bit. I was obviously not prepared for this since I was wearing Crocs, and my feet got so dusty. At this point, I was really skeptical. I didn't really want to go further, but I was there already. Like, where are we? This was weird, but it gets weirder. 
we found a huge bread's nest like what is this or at least that's what i thought it was and then there was this path i don't know what it is if you know what it is or what it means comment down below i don't know if it's like witchcraft or something i'm scared <laughs> and then there was like a bunch of random stuff inside in the middle and a bunch of rocks so basically it led us to a big bird's nest puberty advice pages the most prominent one was an account called puberty helper 101 People calling the owner of this account a groomer and that all his videos had a lot of red flags. In a now deleted video, you could apparently see hands of someone and it looked to be like a man. Now I haven't seen this video, it's been deleted. Whether they look like a man or not, I'm not sure. I'm not saying they are, but I'm not saying they're not. The owner of the account obviously deleted the video and the final post he made said, Hey guys, I'm going to pick three of you randomly and DM you and give you my phone number to help you and talk you through anything you need. If any of you would find this helpful, write in the comments and maybe I'll pick you. Now that's really, really weird, especially if it is an adult that owned this page. And yeah, uh, hopefully no kids actually got his phone number and got groomed by this guy. Cassie Compton sighting. So I wasn't sure if I should have called this Cassie Compton or Haley Grace Phillips, since they're two different people, but, but it got popular due to the name Casey Compton but Casey Compton isn't really part of the video. Anyways, the whole entry is this video. So, Haley Grace Phillips was the girl in the video, and everyone was confused and thought she was Casey Compton, and that the men in the video were harming her. Casey Compton was a girl who went missing from her home in Arkansas on September 14th, 2014. Haley later confirmed on an Instagram video that she was okay and that she was not Cassie. She was very rude in saying that though, so I'm not going to repeat it. And I feel bad for Casey's family. They probably got their hopes up. And I just feel bad for that. Hopefully they're doing better now and hopefully Casey's okay too. Bethany Martin Bethany was a Texas teen who her friend and her stole a necklace from a dead body and recorded it on July of 2021. She posted it on Snapchat, then later that day she would also post on TikTok about how her friend and her found a dead body. The Snapchat video went viral. She also said the necklace quote unquote suited her fashion sense. She was charged and arrested for felony theft from a human corpse or burial. She was released on a $2,000 bond. The man who Bethany stole from was Marcus Adams, whose death was ruled a suicide. I hope Marcus's family is okay, and hopefully his family is doing better now. Scalp popping. Scalp popping was a trend on TikTok where people would grab a portion of their hair and pull hard enough to create a popping sound against their school. Anthony Yuan, uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name, I'm sorry, a Detroit based plastic surgeon, explains it as This is when you pull the hair so hard, you pop the galea off the school that you create a popping sound. Or whatever this word on screen says, is a tough sheet of soft tissue connected to the scalp. Dr. Yuan, sorry again for the name, also said in a comment, it can tear the inside of the scalp, which can bleed a ton on the inside. Think boxer or MMA fighter with scalp hematoma. TikTok also issued a warning on scalp popping, saying, Performance, imitation, or encouragement of dangerous amateur stunts and risky behavior that can lead to serious injury or death is not permitted on TikTok. So yeah, I know I won't, and I don't want to lose my hair either. Andrew Dawson Andrew was a TikToker who disappeared and people who followed him were asking questions. Now in May 2022, Andrew posted a video of quote unquote a giant on top of a mountain in Canada. Here's the video.
This one went pretty popular, both on TikTok and Twitter and many other places. And on TikTok, after he posted the video, he would upload different videos claiming he was being stalked and that he was stopped by the CIA. He then posted a video saying everything was faked and scripted. Many believed he was being coerced into making that video. I'm not sure. He did look kind of distressed in that video, but I'm not perpetuating anything. His final post was on May 18th, according to Dextero, but on his TikTok page, his last uploaded video that is up is from May 17th. His family posted an obituary on July 1st, 2022. I hope his family's doing better nowadays. Secret Mizzy so, Secret Mizzy is a controversial TikTok prankster, and he went viral earlier this year for entering a random house in the middle of the street. Here's the video. If I remember correctly, he did end up getting arrested for causing a public nuisance and was also banned on TikTok for it. I don't really keep up with this guy. I just, while making this video, remembered like this whole controversy and thought to put it on here. So I'm pretty sure he's also from the UK. And if he lived in America, he would know not to even try to do this. But yeah, what do you guys think of this situation? Holocaust challenge. So it was a trend who teens on TikTok partook in. They pretended to be Holocaust victims in heaven, complete with full makeup and looks to simulate dark under eye circles, burns, and sunken in cheeks. In the videos, users would explain how they died, often saying that they were killed in a gas chamber in Auschwitz. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. I'm not going to show any videos here just because I think they're plain disrespectful. And yeah, on to the last one. Indian R-word trend. So I'm keeping this entry at the end, just in case the video does end up getting monetized. I really doubt it will. Before TikTok was banned in India, there was a popular Indian TikToker known as Mehi Barman. Him and his friend filmed a TikTok video where they duetted another user's video. The other user was a woman. I don't know her username. I'm sorry. But Toof thinks, shout out to Toof, link, he'll be linked in the description, that she was trying to raise sexual abuse awareness. And the video that the two men created, they acted like they just R-worded her in their video. After that video, more Indian TikTokers would upload similar videos to wedding her, and TikTok did end up banning the trend after they were made aware of it. I can't find the original video, but Tuv does have it on one of his videos. I'll link both him and that video in the description. So yeah, check him out. He's pretty big, so I'm sure you've already seen his videos. John's Bones. It's an American company that is engaged in selling medical austenology bone kits. The company mainly sells its bones to university, hospitals, chiropractor, medical students, and artists. He has been criticized on TikTok. Questions about the legality, morality, and ethics of trading human bones were talked about. And the owner responded by saying that the United States has no law that prohibits its sale. TikTok user said that there are clients that buy the bones not for educational purposes, but as materials for jewelry and just random stuff. And the owner of the company and TikTok account refused to divulge information about his buyers, citing privacy reasons. However, he did say he has no control over who buys the bones. Anyways, it's still weird in my opinion, selling human bones, I, I don't know. He does parade the bones in his videos, so I think that is weird, but I don't really know. He isn't wrong either, he doesn't have control who buys the bones, and he really can't do anything with what they do with it. It's still kind of weird though. Bentelect. So this controversy is really recent and yeah, it just really shows when <laughs> this video was made. His content is pretty terrible. It's just green screening himself in front of memes and laughing. I don't know how he got famous, but I guess he did. He also started a podcast, which was the catalyst for what I'm about to talk about. He began inviting OnlyFans women to join him on the podcast and by issuing that invite, he would also try to hook up with them. But when the women denied him, 
he got angry and just went off on them. Yeah, the dude's pretty much an incel. Uh, here's another video from your favorite guy, which explains it. I don't know if I'm using this guy as a crutch, but yeah, sorry about that. This guy's a terrible person. I'm here to show you why. Here's the story of Bentelect, the 34-year-old incel. In just three years, Bentelect has amassed over 10 million followers on TikTok. He first started in May of 2020. I honestly have no clue how he gained this many followers because his content consists of green screening a tweet or meme and laughing at it. So he's very popular among the brain dead people on this app. Just like any other person who gets famous, he started a podcast. Bentelect began inviting OnlyFans women to join him on these podcasts. And it came out that he used this invitation as a way to try to hook up with these girls. And when they told him no, he flipped. Here's screenshots from one of the girls he invited. He's bothering her about hooking up to do OnlyFans content in addition to the podcast, saying, I think we could make us a lot of money straight up. And she's like, hey, sorry, I've been MIA. I was taking a mental health day. And he keeps spamming her. Are you gonna come over tonight or are you just a flake? I'm sorry, you're too much of a flake. And this woman goes, you know, if you wouldn't have texted me, calling me a flake, I probably would have said yes. And he goes, yeah, whatever, go fuck yourself, says the girl who's trying to make an OnlyFans. Here's another woman. He tried to pay her $1,000 to let him fuck. Because that's not prostitution, is it? Here's another woman who he invited to do his podcast, and when he asked her if he could do an OnlyFans video with her as well, she said no, and he flipped. Not my problem that you turned around and quit drinking because you're an alcoholic and now pass out at 8 p.m. Fucking peace out, bitch. And there's more. And there's more. Level 4. The Ronnie McNutt Video So, Ronnie McNutt was a 33-year-old veteran who livestreamed his suicide on Facebook, and someone ended up recording it. I definitely won't be showing this video, but users on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook kept getting tricked by the beginning of the video being something random. And halfway through that video, it being cut and showing the Ronnie McNutt video, that's pretty fucked up. And it's pretty sad in all aspects of it. So, I'm not from China, so I didn't know this happened till I started doing research for the series. Xiao, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name, was a Chinese influencer who had over 100,000 followers on China's version of TikTok, Douyin, and ended up dying after falling 160 feet from a crane while live streaming. This event happened in... Kuzhou, China. Apparently, her family said she was employed as a professional crane operator, but denied that she would be filming during work hours. Also, someone who witnessed her fall said that they could see her phone still in her hand while she was falling. She fell on July 23rd, 2021, and again, according to her family, I don't think anyone will ever know if that's exactly what happened, but she missed a step while she was climbing down from the crane. Obviously, I'm not going to show the video. I'm sure you could find it if you really want to. The Bolivia College Incident So this is another shock video, kind of like the Ronnie McNutt. This video shows a lot of students on the fourth floor being cluttered up near the railing and eventually the railing gave out with all the weight on it. The railing breaks and students start falling to their death. This shock video really got popular on TikTok, so I feel that it needs to be on here. Lady Cat Killer during 2020, there was a person who would use Omegle under the furry tag from 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. They would show off burned, skinned, and dead cats. She would hop on TikTok, teasing people on how she hasn't been caught. The authorities eventually got involved, and she was a 19-year-old woman named Crystal Cherica Scott, who sold animal crush videos on the internet. She would hop on Craigslist, offer up Facebook Marketplace, etc., to look for families giving away their pets and she would do the things previously mentioned to them. The authorities, when they raided her house, found three dogs, 12 cats, and multiple lizards that were still alive and showed no signs of abuse. Although they also found multiple other animals dead, some in her freezer and some others scattered around the house. Her arrest, according to the FBI, Special Agent Andrew D. Woman at the time was in large part due to internet sleuths who reported suspected cases of animal cruelty to authorities. She was sentenced to 30 months and three years of supervised release and a maximum fine of $250,000. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know how you could do something to an animal like that, especially ones that give you unconditional love like dogs and cats. I just don't understand. 
and uh, I have two dogs myself and a couple of chickens. Uh, my family has a lot of other pets, but those are like mine personally, and I, I just can't see them getting hurt like that. Jupiter. Jupiter is another example of a low cow, but unlike Lalo, he takes quite a sinister turn. He's 25 and from Idaho, and his TikTok posts are just extremely cringe, which is what gets people to make fun of him. Now aside from being a lol cow, he has done some pretty disturbing things, and thanks to another TikToker that goes by, the Linda Binda exposed him. She had him on her show to troll and mess around with him, which is pretty fucked up, but in the end, she did a service. During her show, she asks him what his darkest fantasy is, and he responds with, What's your deepest, darkest fantasy? My darkest fantasy is to watch all those who wronged me die by my hand. That's my darkest one. It makes me want, it just, it's just one of my darkest fantasies of doing. I want to kill everybody who's wronged me. Oh. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm going to say. I want to kill those who have wronged me as a person. I can make those people disappear. There's places out here in Idaho where I can bury bodies and no one would think to look. Have you done it before? Mm, not really done it, but actually thought of it. There are some people I want to bury out somewhere in Melba where no one will ever think to look. There's places okay. here in Idaho no one would ever think to look for a body. Okay. They want us to address the, the board again. I was set up. I was really set up. I was set up, I was tired, I was high on nicotine, and I wasn't thinking straight. Have you stopped talking to pe to minors on TikTok? Yes, I have. I stopped. I quit doing that. There were some who contacted me on uh, on Discord, but I, but I kind of blocked them and left their chats because I didn't want to be kept being set up. So I said it would be better if we all stayed friends until they're older, but until then, we're just going to remain friends, you know? Yeah, that's what I was gonna, that's what I should have said the first time, but instead I was high and exhausted at the time, so I wasn't thinking clearly. So my brain was- Yeah, so let's let's keep it that way. Let's keep it that way. I don't want, I don't want to see you in jail. Me, me neither. I don't want to have to do a conjugal visit. I know. Or do um, I? <laughs> your brother and your ex-roommate have charges for being it's not my roommate, it's only my brother. And they should all let go of that. What happened, happened, let it. On the same interview slash show, they also talk about Jupiter's pedo allegations. He says that he was set up and that he was high on nicotine and that he was not thinking straight. When asked, did he stop talking to minors on TikTok? He said that he doesn't do it anymore either, but that they should still be friends till they're older. Then someone on Discord claiming that they were 13 asks Jupiter if she can send him pictures of herself even though she was underage. He says, only if you want to, because he doesn't mind, and asks back if they're planning on turning him in, and if he says yes, she says she would never. He also talks about lowering the age of consent to 15 slash 16 years old. So another creepy thing is that Linda had him so much on her TikTok that Jupiter thought they were actually dating. She played with him saying yes, they were dating. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, he believes that he's half werewolf and half vampire. That's pretty cringe, but uh, what can I do? Uh, on to the next one. It is with a humble heart that I, Jupiter, aka Corbin Pinnell, was a pedophile and I'm hated for those crimes. The Benadryl Challenge Benadryl is an over the counter medicine used to treat pain itching, allergies, cold symptoms, and many other things. The challenge started around 2020, revolving the overconsumption of Benadryl. The challenge instructs participants to film themselves consuming large doses of Benadryl and documenting the effect of tripping or hallucinating. The recommended amount is 25 to 50 milligrams, but the people doing the challenge were taking around 300 to 500. Like the other trends on this layer, children slash people did end up dying from this and it's just super sad to hear please don't let this challenge resurface in any capacity or anything similar at that brandon heberlin he's 20 years old and the first time he got popular online was because he asked out dixie d'amelio on a date and that video itself was pretty creepy 
Here's a clip of the full video because it's pretty long. Hi, Dixie. Uh, my name is Brandon. We've never met. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions, if you don't mind. So the first question I wanted to ask was, uh, I do have a crush on you, and I just wanted to ask you out uh, on a date or something, or maybe we can meet, hang out. He was also allegedly talking and dating a 12-year-old girl while he was 18 years old. Yeah, that one's pretty bad, but this next one is, in my opinion, worse. He also admitted to kissing a 9-year-old girl, and shortly after admitting to kissing the 9-year-old girl, he would hop on a live and have a mental breakdown, and also joke about the whole situation. He ended up deciding to compare himself to EDP. Here's both videos of himself admitting and a creepy skit about the situation. Exactly, bro. Who would do such a thing? Loki, I don't care. I did some some stupid things that uh, a I probably be arrested for, and b I probably deserve what is being uh, told to me and stuff. But um, I'm just here to let you know that ever since what happened back in 2020. I have kept myself clean, I have, uh... He did eventually get banned on TikTok. He has tried, like EDP, to make comebacks to the internet. And yeah, just like EDP, he's <laughs> never been allowed to come back in any capacity. Eventually, he did end up getting arrested by the Eastern Kentucky Police Department and was charged with fourth degree assault, third degree sexual abuse, and second degree unlawful imprisonment. So yeah, at least he got arrested for something and hopefully he never gets back out on the streets. But yeah, yeah, this layer will have a bunch of weirdos like this guy. The Lopez brothers. So these brothers became famous on TikTok for dancing. And Tony Lopez, the 23 year old, the younger of the two, his account on TikTok has 23.2 million followers as of right now. And his older brother, 26, has 21.1 million as of right now. Those are their ages according to famous birthdays. I'm not sure if that's 100% true, but yeah, famous birthdays, that's the reference for that. They were also members of Hype House. I didn't know what this was till I guess this iceberg, which is just a TikTok creator house. And the house itself has its own controversies. I should probably add those onto like the big mega TikTok iceberg video. Anyways, Tony Lopez was accused of receiving. Tony Lopez was accused and received a lawsuit for alleged sexual battery and emotional distress and the people that accused them were two minors and they also accused them of grooming and coerced them into sexual acts. The minors were two 15 year old girls. Then in 2020, a Twitter user claimed that Andreas Lopez, sorry if I pronounce his name, that he forced girls to touch his genitals. Andreas did apologize to Alessandra, the girl who accused him, and he also encouraged people to speak up if anything has happened to them. While Tony Lopez, the younger brother, did accuse Alessandra of lying, he also said that his allegations were fake and the people that accused him were just trying to get money from him. I, I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if the lawsuit is complete or not or if it's defunct. I can't really find anything else on Google, but if anyone knows anything, I would love to know so I could update this in the next video. The Skull Breaker Challenge it's a challenge that became popular around March 2020, and the challenge itself is very dangerous, just like every other challenge that's on this layer of the iceberg. It is when three people line up side to side, and the two people on the side jump up, and then the middle one jumps. And while the middle one is in the air, and the people on the side kick their feet, causing them to fall and land on their back, this also resolves in 99% of the time, the people smashing their head on the ground. Most of the time, the person who's in the middle does not know exactly what's going to happen. It's a quote-unquote prank. I wouldn't really call it that. It'd be more like attempted murder or injuring someone. A lot of people did end up getting hurt due to this trend. U.S. prosecutors charged two minors with third-degree aggravated assault related to this quote-unquote challenge. The person who was in the middle had a seizure and a concussion. Here's this video. Their faces are censored, so I feel like this is kind of showable. I probably won't be showing a lot of the videos for this layer of the iceberg just because of how dark they are and that goes for the next layer as well so i'm sorry if you guys are waiting for the videos 
maybe if we ever make like a Patreon thing, we could do like an uncensored version of all these, including like every other 4chan iceberg we've done. But that's like far in the future, so. Uno, dos, tres. The blackout challenge. Like the other challenges on this layer, this one is pretty deadly. Now it wasn't a challenge that started on TikTok, but it did resurface on TikTok in 2021. The challenge can be traced back to about 2008, and the challenge is also referred to as the pass out challenge. It encourages users to hold their breath till they can't and pass out due to lack of oxygen. If the brain has low oxygen for over 3 minutes, you can get brain damage. And if you have low oxygen for over 5 minutes, it could result in death. Many people slash kids have died due to this trend. And I hope this trend doesn't resurface again. I'm also not showing any videos for this because, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Austin, 13. Real name, Austin Morosky. I don't really know how to traverse this entry, so I'll just say exactly how I know it. So apparently, when Austin was 9, he R-worded his 5-year-old sister, and then was sent to a juvenile detention center during high school. So yeah, that story is really weird, and I'm not sure if the accusation is true. And also, I don't know why the parents didn't do something then when while he was 9. And it's just really weird. The topic of something like this happening with two kids is really complex, and I'm not really sure how to traverse it myself. I'm going to try to be as, I guess, truthful to what happened or what I know. His TikTok account isn't up anymore, and all I could find was duetted videos replying to his videos. He made one video denying everything, but then made another video making the worst apology ever made. A lot of people miss the part that when he was 9, when this allegedly happened, and their videos feel like they're calling him out as if he did it while he was an adult. Now the situation is still sad to hear, and if it did happen, like I said, I don't know how the law would handle something like this. I, I don't know if any of them got counseling if it did happen. From what I've read, they didn't, and the parents did not really seem to care about it either. Anyways, here's a duetted video of his apology video since the original one is gone. And you'll see what I'm talking about by it being one of the worst apologies ever made. TikTok is to educate my followers, friends, and family. Regardless of the lack of knowledge, this concerning my life and my family, I as a TikToker and a man will continue to make my fans happy and entertain. I just want my true supporters to know that if you happen to get in the same scenario like myself, don't beat yourself up. Zo Laverne. She was a TikToker and YouTuber that made dance and lip sync videos. She was massively popular, but when a video of her while she was 19 years old came up of herself kissing a 13 year old boy, her popularity just plummeted. Obviously, she was called out for being a child groomer and her being a pedophile. She tried justifying it by saying they were really close friends and she knew it was inappropriate, but she still really, I guess, fell for him. I don't know, it's just really weird. She also allegedly sold photos of her newborn baby. She posted a picture on Instagram with the caption, link in bio for more exclusive pics, which all the sites I saw quoted just that, but another site I found, just to clear it up, she didn't actually sell photos of her baby the way they were trying to word it. It was just photos of her during the birth, which is still kind of weird, but like not in the other type of weird, you know? I'm just trying to say that that... that Allegation is fake, but she's still a weirdo and a groomer though, so she's still, to me, a bad person. Enter Carden. The Enter Carden uh, account slash trend was started by a gym talk influencer called Evan Carden, and in November 2021, it was a reaction to the Enter Kofi trend, which was started by TikToker Kofi Tyrell. And on November 25th, 2021, Carden posted a TikTok in which he compared himself to another TikToker, Deadlifting. And he was essentially portraying himself to be stronger than him and making him look weak. So this is level 4 and compared to the other entries here, you could probably tell why Enter Carden is here. On November 5th, 2022, TikToker Mr. Goob Returns posted a video that exposed Evan Carden for allegedly messaging a 16 year old, which was a decoy, and, and Carden was trying to hook up with them. I won't go into detail with this entry just because this is like an hour long video and I hope Underflow makes a video on him. Anyways, shout out Underflow. Tawnite. So I won't go into much depth since I'll add an extra video at the end, 
by your favorite guy on TikTok. That explains it well. Anyways, he started TikTok in order to spread quote unquote positivity, but that really wasn't true. He would usually just spread negativity and especially towards the trans community. He also scammed his fans out of $200,000 by saying he was homeless, but he really wasn't and multiple other things. But to me, the biggest one was that he's a groomer. And anyways, here's the video that explains it. It's kind of long and I don't know if I should cut it or not, but I think cutting it will not really help explain everything, you know? This man right here is the worst man on TikTok right now. And I'm going to tell you guys everything he's done. This is the story of the tall knight, the most despicable man on TikTok. The tall knight started doing TikTok two years ago. And originally, everything was fine. He was about good vibes. He wore the knight's helmet. People liked him. But starting on February 20th of this year, he has committed so many abominations that I'm all going to name to you. You better buckle up because I have a lot of things to talk about here. First off, on February 20th, the tall knight scammed his fans out of over $200,000. He told them he was homeless, when in reality, he was not. Here's a screenshot of him texting a girl on Instagram, saying he could buy her a bunch of expensive things with the money he scammed his fans from, saying that he was never actually homeless, as you can see here. When his sister's husband called him out for scamming his fans, he threatened to dox him and made him take all the receipts down. A little less than a month later, he made a video that purposely misgendered a trans person simply because he didn't like the music that they put out. He doubled down on his actions and his words multiple times, and here's him bragging to somebody about all the followers he gained from being a transphobe. Next up, he's cheated on his girlfriend so many times, it's too many to count. Here are different screenshots from different girls, all of them cheating on his girlfriend. They broke up and then got back together. Her name's Kate, and they're currently together right now. One of the girls who he cheated on his girlfriend with came out and showed messages of him saying he wanted to grape her and do other disgusting things to her. When these girls came out with the information that he was cheating on his girlfriend with them, he sent his fans after them, doxed a bunch of them, and threatened them so much that they took all the receipts down. The Toll Knight claimed that he did this because he thought it was an open relationship because his girlfriend was bisexual. My girlfriend's bisexual, that does not mean it's an open relationship. Toll Knight has a history of him doxing and his fans doxing anyone who calls him out for his terrible behavior. When content creators came out about this, he doxed the girl, left TikTok for a month, and then came back as if nothing had happened. And here, he is unapologetic that the girl got doxed. Next, we have his huge Patreon debacle. He showed his private parts to minors. He was selling a fitness course on Patreon, which by the way, doesn't have age verification, so he was selling it to minors. And anyone who buy his Patreon of his fitness routine saw his private parts. Minors, anyone, you name it. Without their consent, they saw it. He claims it was locked away, but as you can see from here, and I had a sensor it, there's a tiny lock on the picture, but the rest of the image is clearly visible. Next up, he was also selling an adult course on his Patreon, which again, by the way, is not age verified, and they don't allow NSFW content on there. So his minor fans bought it. As of recent, he claimed that it was never available, but as you can see from this screenshot, which I had a sensor, on the top, those were pictures of his wee wee. Finally, we have the latest, latest controversy that he's committed. And his very latest controversy comes from him making sexual comments in replies to underage girls on his TikTok page. The sexually charged comment he replied to of a 13 year old girl. He made a video advertising his OnlyFans replying to a comment of a 15 year old girl. This past week, he's gotten banned on his main account, which had 1.6 million followers, and I agree with this decision. Now he's on that alt that he showed, trying to deny everything, talking about a lot of nonsense, nothing that really addresses the multitude of things he has committed. This man can't be a content creator. There's too much. And I used to be mutuals with him, is the funniest thing. Before any of this came out, and he still follows me on that alt account. And guess what? This is far from the entire picture of everything the Tall Knight has done. There are multiple people who haven't come forward yet, aren't willing to, and are scared of him to dox them or to threaten their life. Before I go, I do want to talk about my friend Professor Pippi. He's been calling out the Tall Knight since the beginning. The Tall Knight doxed him and 30 others in his Discord, including his head mod, who is a pregnant woman. If you're following me, make sure you follow him. Anyways, that's it for the story of the Tall Knight, TikTok's most despicable man. What do you guys think about this? Thank you for listening and follow for more. Level 5 Gan Sojon. He was a popular Chinese food blogger slash TikToker who was known as Fatty Goes to Africa. So Gan was live streaming himself walking and hanging out with some of his friends when suddenly all we hear is high pitched screaming and yelling with the camera shaking wildly. Then the stream just cuts off. A later recording shows a visibly dazed Gan just in the middle of the street covered with blood while another person believed to be his attacker who was another Chinese food blogger slash TikToker, Feng Zhengyong. Uh, I don't really care if I mispronounce this guy's name, because fuck him.
So, like I said, he was believed to be one of his attackers. So, one of Gon's friends was also stabbed, and he was hospitalized. Uh, Gon ended up dying right there on the street in the video. Obviously, I'm not going to show it. I think I said either in the last video, or later in this video, that if we ever do like a Patreon or whatever other service similar to that is, that maybe one day we'll re-upload this, but with uncensored, you know? Obviously, I'm not playing the video here on YouTube, but if we ever do that, I'll add it onto it. But yeah, in that video, you could see him shaking uh, with water, blood covered everywhere, stab wounds, and he ends up dying on video. And yeah, luckily his friend, from what I read up on, he survived. And eventually, Fang did get arrested by the local authorities. But Jesus, man, that's insane. I don't know if they had any beef or anything like that due to the language barrier, but social media is never that serious. Gone from what I've read up on for this entry, just seemed like a nice guy and just happy to be there, you know? And probably just trying to enjoy life and food. And yeah, hopefully his family is better now. And I know this entry is insane, but the ones following are either just as insane or if not more. Anyways, on to the next one. Victor Sousa. He killed his girlfriend, Daisy De La O, and her body was found behind her apartment building. Susana Salas, the mom of the victim, says that Daisy broke up with him a month before the murder happened because of alleged physical abuse. Daisy's younger brother recalls him having to physically intervene when Sousa was trying to strangle her while their mother was not around. And another time, they got in an argument while on the top bunk of their bed, and it turned physical, and again, he had to physically intervene. Daisy's family says surveillance video provided to eyewitness news shows Sousa dragging Daisy's body into an alley after he stabbed her to death. Her body was found in the next morning rolled up in a rug. This happened on February 23rd of 2021. The authorities on the case were already looking for him, but he already fled to Rosarito, Mexico. He even got a job at a bar. Anyways, one of Daisy's friends, Rebecca Fuentes, started a hashtag called Justice for Daisy and would post pics of Sousa. It caught on on TikTok, and TikTok users would post more things with the same has with the same hashtag, and then a random user would claim they recognized him. I think all of these users wanted to be anonymous. They said that they saw him working at a bar, and then another anonymous person said that they work with them at a nightclub. And after that, he got caught in Mexico and arrested on July 2nd, 2021. He did plea not guilty, even though he was caught on camera. He was found guilty by the jury and could face 26 to life, so yeah. Now this entry is kind of interesting since TikTok helped catch the killer rather than the app hosting a killer. I'm glad he got caught and I hope he stays in prison. Sarah Hosseth and Eren Guerrero So I'll start this entry with a bit of the backstory for full context of the situation. Daniel Hosseth and Elizabeth Schwarak, hopefully I said her last name right, met in Oregon. They dated and eventually married. They ended up having three children, and throughout their whole marriage, they had multiple problems. Daniel had accused Elizabeth of having an affair. Elizabeth called the police multiple times, and once called them for apparently being touched inappropriately during an argument with Daniel. They did eventually divorce. Elizabeth got custody of their kids. Daniel then tried to mend his life and deal with the alleged crimes he had committed. Daniel lived alone for about eight years after the divorce, and his kids did visit him frequently. Okay, so now the reason why this is on the iceberg. During the visits Daniel received, he told his daughter, Sierra, that he did not want to see her with her 18-year-old boyfriend. Sierra was 16 at the time, and they started dating in June 2020 and were trying to elope in Los Angeles. Both parents found out and were trying to stop them. They got offended with the idea of the parents of a 16-year-old girl would try to stop them from eloping, so they decided to assassinate Daniel Halseth, the father of Sierra. Both Sierra and Aaron Guerrero arrived to the house of Daniel and stabbed him 70 times before they stuffed him into a sleeping bag and setting the sleeping bag on fire. Their original plan was to set the house on fire with him as well and to flee the state, but they had to settle with just the body. They fled the scene of the murder in a Nissan Altima. The family got concerned that Daniel hadn't been responding to them, even his ex-wife. Sierra's grandmother, Christine Halseth, texted her that she couldn't reach her father. However, the daughter told her that he was well and that his phone had problems that he would get resolved within a day. With that, their concerns temporarily alleviated. The grandmother thanked the teenager and said, love you. Elizabeth also noticed odd things going on in the bank account they shared and also being unable to reach him. They called the police and found that his body had been burned from head to toe. So Guerrero's parents also contacted the investigators at the crime scene. They appeared to be searching for their son, whom they believed had escaped with Sierra. Guerrero's mother also told officials 
that they tried to keep them apart after knowing they were trying to elope in Los Angeles. When authorities finally apprehended the juvenile couple, they were already in Salt Lake City, Utah. They were pulled over for failing to pay for a light rail transit charge. And the reason why it's on the iceberg is because they uploaded this TikTok. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. After day, three. day three after <laughs> murdering somebody. Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. Um, and we had sex a lot today. Mm -hmm. It was worth it. I got plenty of sex. I was payment for doing it. <laughs> and no, no bleeding this time. Mm -hmm. We got, we got through that. We, we overcame. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so Shara was charged as an adult, although she was just 16 years old. However, because she was under the age of 18, Nevada law prohibits her from facing the death penalty. On the other hand, Guerrero was 18, and he might face the death penalty for his role in Daniel Hoss's murder. Now, I do feel really bad for the dad and the dad's family and his other kids. I'm sure the ex-wife was also kind of sad, uh, but I feel more bad for his family. Uh, he was just trying to do what's best for his kids and not letting them elope with an adult at that point. But yeah, uh, on to the next one. Zachary Latham. So in April 2020, Zachary Latham would get into an altercation with his neighbor, Catherine Durham. Outside of his home, Durham was demanding that Latham slow down while driving on their street. He filmed the exchange and uploaded the video to TikTok referring to her as a Karen. The TikTok would go on to garner more than 3 million views and helped Latham gain over 40k followers. Eventually, Latham promised to reveal the home address of the Durhams if he got a million views in later TikToks. Yet another video features William Durham, who is Catherine Durham's son, walking up to Latham's car and asking him to get out. Latham claimed that he did have a knife, so that's, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know whether it's true or not, that's, so. And then apparently in another TikTok, which is now deleted, so I can't even see it, that was from April 23rd, 2020, Latham is holding a gun with the caption, this is how you handle neighbors, which is also pretty fucked, so. Right now, I still feel like both parties are in the wrong. The Durham family did apparently try to contact authorities, but due to the COVID pandemic, their attorney said that all the courts were closed, so they didn't get any help from them. So Latham's wife, Sarah Latham, recorded the stabbing of William T. Durham, the husband of Catherine Durham, on May 4th, 2020. The video begins with the Durham sons, William and Gage Durham, riding their bikes up to the property, followed by William Durham, and his wife, Sarah Latham, is recording and saying, quote unquote, I promise you, you better back up because you're not going to like what's coming out. And as all three of the men are walking towards her garage, she tells them to back up and back up. Sarah then calls for her husband who comes out and it's really hard to tell, but in the video, it seems like he's carrying a knife and a stun gun and a stun gun that does go off eventually. And the youngest Durham backs him into the garage and Latham is swinging around. Both Sarah and her husband yell, get off of our property which, I mean, I still feel like both parties are wrong during this time. I, I don't know why you would come to someone's property like that either, especially in America. So the three Durham family members b keep backing Latham into the garage, and Sarah keeps yelling for him. The camera gets shaky, but one of the last clear images is William Durham covered in blood, and he did end up dying. Latham was charged with second-degree reckless manslaughter, aggravated assaults, and weapon offenses. But the jury did find Latham not guilty, backing the defense that the then 18-year-old was defending himself, his wife, and his house when he stabbed his neighbor during the fight in Latham's garage. Uh, so, I, I really don't know what to feel in this entry, because I would protect my house, you know, from intruders, especially when they're backing me into the garage like that. But it also feels that Latham kept taunting them and, and trying for something like this to happen, which it kind of, it did end up happening. I don't really agree with either parties here. So yeah, it's just, I don't know. What are you going to do, Karen? That's not my name. Let me get my name straight. Go ahead. I'll you okay, Karen? Go ahead. Get my tag. Go. Get my tag, Karen. My name is not Karen. So get my name straight. Get my tag. It's okay.
All because my car is loud. Three cup. Nicola Priest. She was a 23 year old mother who would post on TikTok in order to try and gain some sort of TikTok fame. Although she did get an audience, the audience wasn't there for her, but they were there for her daughter, Kaylee Jade Priest. The people that did watch her TikToks noticed that her child, Kaylee Jade Priest, did show signs of abuse on her body, but they didn't think much of it. They just believe she's a child and perhaps she hurt herself while playing or fell or tripped, etc. But there was more to it. Her mother and her 22-year-old boyfriend, Callum Redfern, used this little girl as a punching bag. They would occasionally beat her up with the intention to cause serious harm. One night, her boyfriend, Callum Redfern, her boyfriend came over to Nicola's apartment in hopes that he would get lucky. However, due to Kaylee's constant crying, they could not focus on... I, this video is demonetized. I'm having sex, right? <laughs> no, no reason to censor that. It's already demonetized. There's no reason to worry about it. And the reason she was crying was because she was vomiting severely, which she was vomiting because she was beaten earlier. Both the mom and the boyfriend lost her temper when Kaylee wouldn't stop crying, so they beat her up so brutally that she died on the spot. So she's a terrible mother, right? But she also posted TikTok videos of herself dancing or with her boyfriend with the captions such as focused on me or time to boss up, etc. Eventually, they did end up finding out that the girl died and went to jail, court. Although they were cleared of murder, which I find wrong. They should be labeled as murderers. They were found guilty of manslaughter, though. So, I mean, at least there was some sense of justice. Claire Miller. She, at the time, was 14 years old, but she stabbed her 19-year-old disabled sister to death, Helen, during the night of Saturday, February 21st, 2021. Her sister Helen was born with cerebral palsy, I hopefully I said that right, and was wheelchair bound, which meant she needed care and attention 24-7. Besides that, it still seemed like the family were completely normal. Claire seemed like a normal girl. She would post TikToks too, uh, the reason why she's on the iceberg. Apparently, she called Lancaster police and told them that she stabbed her sister. And when they came to the house, they found her outside in her pajamas, covered in blood and washing her hands in the snow. The snow was also covered red. Claire, when the police took her in and interrogated her, said, Oh, McDonald's? I would have killed someone sooner if I knew I was going to get McDonald's. So, yeah, that's pretty unsettling. So her lawyer would try to get her to be on trial in juvenile court so she would be out at 21 years old. But the judge overlooking the case thought that that would be way too little time to rehabilitate her and had her tried as an adult. I believe in the state that they were in that any case with murder involved is considered an adult case. They also tried not guilty to do insanity, but it also didn't work. Peaked Interest made a great video on Claire and this whole event on the century. I'll link his video in the description. Uh, I did use his video as reference, so that's why I'm doing it. Joseph Jimenez. On July 26, 2021, Corona PD received a 911 call for Regal Edwards Theater at the Crossing Shopping Center. A theater employee found Riley Goodrich and Anthony Barajas inside the cinema near their seats with gunshot wounds to their heads. Officials said Riley Goodrich was pronounced dead at the scene, while Anthony Barajas was rushed to a local trauma center where he died days later. Anthony Barajas was very popular on TikTok. He was almost at a million followers. He was known on TikTok as It's Anthony Michael. According to the officials on the case, they didn't think Joseph knew about Anthony's popularity on social media, and it was just unprovoked. And man, it's pretty sad that he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't know any of his content nor did I really research it for the video, so I can't really say much on that. Besides that, it, it sucks that he was just there. Apparently, friends of Joseph Jimenez did tell detectives that they believed that he had brought a gun into the cinema. They said that he was acting strangely and that they managed to sneak out of the theater, apparently without warning anyone. Two of the friends also told investigators that they saw Joseph Jimenez running out of the theater and speed away in his car. Yeah, it just sucks that he was at the wrong place, wrong time. I hope the family of Riley Goodrich and Anthony Barajas is okay. Jen Kid, aka Ali Nasser Abu Laban. He was 29, he almost had a million followers on TikTok, and did quote unquote comedy sketches and impersonations. 
and on October 2021, he was charged with the deaths of 28-year-old Anna Abulaban and 29-year-old Rayburn Cardenas Baron at the Spire San Diego Luxury Apartment Complex, and he is charged with two counts of first-degree murder, allegations of using a handgun in the slayings. So Anna actually kicked Ali out of their apartment, and she was also having a romantic relationship with Rayburn. So eventually, Ali would break into their apartment and would vandalize it, while also installing an app on their daughter's phone to hear everything that's going on in the apartment. While I don't condone cheaters, that's also not an excuse for what Ali did. He is a terrible person and I hope he stays in jail. Isabella Guzman Isabella Guzman, an 18-year-old girl from Aurora, Colorado, stabbed her mother, Yu Mihoi, 79 times. Isabella was found not guilty by reason of insanity caused by schizophrenia. Years later, footage from the courtroom of Isabella smirking went viral on TikTok, sparking curiosity about her story. She had a lot of people trying to justify her actions, and others accused the videos of glorifying mental illness. So yeah, she wasn't really a TikToker or anything like that, she just got extremely popular on TikTok. I'm not sure why. Cameron Heron Cameron Heron was street racing in the Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa, Florida, going at least 100 miles per hour. He does start to slow down, but he ends up losing control of his car, and he goes directly into two people. They were 20-year-old Jessica Riesinger and her one-year-old daughter, Lilia. Cameron was sentenced to 24 years, and he was 21 at the time. A couple of hours later, there was a hashtag called Justice for Cameron trending on TikTok, not because he was actually innocent, but because they thought he was too cute to go to jail. Yeah, there's slightly more to the story afterwards, but it's mostly people just glorifying him because he's cute and hope he gets out early. But personally, I hope he doesn't get out early. He'll get out when he's 45. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty much his whole life right there. Hey, what's up again? It's Eris. I know I made an intro, but I wanted to make an outro as well. Uh, school did start. By the time this video goes up, school should be a month in. Uh, I'm recording this two days into the semester, so... That gives you a timeline of our schedule right now. We should have enough time to manage all the videos coming forward, thanks to this series, which was its primary goal. I also wanted to talk about TikTok stuff, but yeah, if I did miss anything, like I said in the intro, I'm not going to cover it currently, maybe in the future. Anyways, again, like, comment, subscribe. We really appreciate it, and it helps us in the algorithm. Thank you, Tuve, Premium Aphid, Underflow, and the other creators that help me gather information for this iceberg anyway see you guys next week for the introduction to our i'd like to call this next series huge well it, it'll be huge content wise i'm not too sure how big it will get views wise hopefully that series will help us reach 5k before the end of the year i'd really like that to happen maybe more anyways i hope you enjoyed the video and have a good rest of your day oh and wishes good luck at school